In this video, we're going to give you a quick run through of how to use our Photoshop droplets that we've created for you. To use the droplets in Lightroom, first you're going to have to install them. So what you're going to need to do is go over to Imaginomic.com, go to the support menu, click on Action Book, scroll down to where you see Imaginomic droplet set for Lightroom. We're going to select the download for Windows for Portraiture 2. We're going to click it. It's going to take you to a user registration. If you've got an email and you've already registered with us, you should be able to put it in here. Sometimes it won't show up if you're a relatively new customer and you may end up having to enter this information in here. I'm just going to put my email address in here. I'm going to click Submit. And if you come up with the Internet Explorer block this side, this is the way we got it set up here. Just click on the bar and then click Download File. It'll ask you, do you want to open or save the file? I'm going to go save and I'm going to save it out to the desktop which is the easiest place. The name will be ptv2 underscore droplets underscore pc dot zip. We save it. Once you've downloaded the zip file to your desktop you need to locate it and double click on it and according to the OS you have you will have a dialog that comes up that shows the unzip files and a list of them here. And what we want to do now is click on the first one, scroll down and press shift click on the last one and then we want to right click and copy then we want to find the export folder over in Lightroom and the easiest way of doing it is go over to Lightroom and select an image right click on it click export make sure that files on disk up here is selected we don't want to have files on CD DVD make sure it's files on disk scroll down to the bottom of the dialog post processing after export and then right here we should go to export actions folder now and what that does is that brings up the export actions folder now we've already copied the droplets out of the zip folder so what we're going to do is we're going to paste them right clicking clicking paste and see it's doing it, it's copying them over and we open up the folder and there they are listed there and when we come back over to Lightroom we see that it's updated the after export folder we scroll it down we can see that all the droplets are listed in there and we see this one is, has a check mark by it which is this one right here so that's what you have to do to be able to get them on there before you can even use them you have to download the file you have to unzip it and then you have to copy them to the export actions folder we're going to start by exporting a single file from within in Lightroom using the droplets so we're going to left click to select the file then we're going to right click select export the first thing you want to check in this dialog is be sure you're at the top of the dialog and you'll see a files on disk most people don't realize that if you just left click on that it'll also show files on CD DVD well if the files on CD DVD is selected you have a different icon that comes up there and if you scroll down you don't see the post processing menu selection down here you have to have files on disk selected for that post processing menu item to pop up down here and what we're going to export to in the location, we're going to go same folder as original photo. You have choices here, specific folder, same folder. We're just doing that to show you some of the options. We're going to put it in a subfolder also, which we've got PTV2 test. This separates the test files out and shows us what they're looking at one at a time. And then we're going to have to have checked add to this catalog. That's important you have that. If not, it won't add it to the catalog and you won't see them showing back up in Lightroom. And the existing files, we're going to click overwrite without warning because we're just testing here you can have asked what to do choose a new name for the exported file or skip and just for this purpose of testing we got it overwrite without warning so we don't have to keep answering something or renaming it or whatever our file naming templates we're not gonna bother with those we're gonna leave them the way they are now it's just a customized way of setting up naming conventions in the file settings itself there's several things that's going on here one is is that we have two sets of droplets we have one that handles the PSD and TIFFs and DNGs and then we have another that handles JPEGs and for those of you guys that output the JPEGs and you want to do it from the export you have to be able to use the JPEG droplets here and once we've got another set of droplets up on the web that you'll be able to download with JPEG extensions on the end of them here you can see JPEG, JPEG, JPEG the thing is is that there's not as many droplets with JPEG functionality as there is for PSD or TIFF files for the simple fact that JPEGs can't export layers out and save them. So some of the uh, masking features and everything, 
you're not going to be able to export them. Of course, you can do that over in Photoshop with a, a layer on a JPEG, but when you try to save the file out, you're going to have to save it out. If you're going to use those layers again, you're going to have to save it out as a PSD or a TIFF. So if you're going to use the JPEG functionality, you, you've got to have one of these droplets that has JPEG appended to it. If not, it's going to start asking you every time you try to save a layered file out, it's going to ask you what you want to do with it, and it's going to annoy you to death. So be sure you've got that selected there. For this case here, we're just going to pull up one of the JPEG ones. We're just setting our quality at 100, our color space at sRGB. We're not going to mess with image sizing, output sharpening, or the metadata. And then we're going to get in here, and we're going to just click Export. And what's happening is it's going to put that image automatically over into the folder here. It's going to run Photoshop in the background, and then it's going to process the image, and then it's going to bring it right back over here into Lightroom. And you'll see it says rendering file changed, and there it shows, and that's exactly the way it should look. We're back over in our working folder now, and what we're going to do here is select all three of these files. We're just going to shift-click the last one, and then we're going to export, but instead of exporting with a dialog, we're going to export with previous here. Now what that does is that allows you to just use the previous export settings. And this is nice because if you've had a big shoot there with several hundred files in there, you may want to export the same settings over and over, but you only want to pick certain files out of there and certain groups and all. So this gives you the ability to just use the previous settings on there. So we click Export with Previous, and the files are automatically popped over into the subfolder that we made. Photoshop loads up in the background. It processes the files and then it'll bring them back in here with the processing parameters that we set in that droplet. As you can see here, this one's changed. Now this one. And now this one here. So as you can see, we have, these are the original file up here at the top and the preview up the little small preview. And you can see that it works just the way it should. One last thing we'd like to mention here is that for those of you that still have CS3, on your system and for some reason you may have problems running droplets out of CS4 you can use CS3 and what happens is that Lightroom defaults to the latest version of Photoshop you have on there in this case is CS4 but if you go and load up CS3 in the background and just let it sit there and then process the droplets it'll run them over in CS3 and it'll have the same functionality as it does over in CS4